Welcome to the Business Life of Husband and Wife podcast. A show based on real experiences in business and life. Hey guys, welcome back. Episode 74 today. And as you guys know, our listeners, we have four formats of our show. For you that don't know, we have our couples episode. Which is today. Which is today. And we'll introduce them in a, or I don't introduce very well, but we will do that in a minute. And uh, then we have our... Our expert guest expert episodes where we have uh, business professionals. So anywhere from marketing specialists, HR specialists, uh, lawyers, accountants, that type of thing. So last year you guys heard everything uh, like the 101 of all of these topics. And then this year we're going uh, topic specific. So we're doing a deep dive into different things. So, and then we have our third format of the show, which is the Q and a episodes, which you guys can submit your questions on the top right hand corner of our website, which is business life of husband and wife.ca. And then new for this year, we have the foundation hour. Yeah. So foundation hour episodes for you guys that know we are writing our second book. And because we're trying to time crunch a little bit, we are learning and recording each chapter kind of with you guys. Some of the concepts will be in some of those chapters. We have 10 episodes, 10 chapters. Um, there'll be eight of them this season. Uh, I think there's four, I think done, I think yeah. there's five through them now. Um, you guys can check those out. And then I always introduce something and mess with Robin, just, just to bug her out. She's like, what? No, I'm just fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, so guys, today is our couples episode. Super excited for this one. Mm-hmm. Um, really cool couple that are coming on with us today. I don't do introductions. I'm going to let them introduce themselves in a minute after I kind of give a little rundown of why we're doing this episode. So I grew up on an isolated post. So we were 57 miles from town and homeschooling was the only option. Like that was it. Like trying to drive me to school every day was just not going to happen. And so I homeschooled grade one and two um, on a government ranch, breaking horses, dad did all that kind of stuff. So for me, this is a really cool episode because it's super important that people learn. Like I learned a lot of like real life skills at like a little guy, like how to catch a horse, when to feed animals, who gets fed first, like just some of these skills that we're kind of talking about and kind of our new thing that we're working on. So I'm really excited to talk to these guys about the homeschooling versus traditional schooling today. So without further ado. Welcome guys. Hi guys. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. Appreciate it. So do you guys want to just give us a quick little background? Some names are probably good. Let's start with names. And uh, give us a little rundown of uh, your guys' background and kind of what led you guys to where you are now with the Work Wherever podcast and some of the homeschooling that you guys are doing. Cool. All right. You want to introduce? You want me to do the names? You can introduce. I'll do the names. Okay. So, yeah, I'm Roy. This is Haley Edwards. Hello. We are married. We do own a uh, a business together, a few of them. But our primary business is we do IT consulting, IT management, and development. So we help with business process automation and artificial intelligence. And as the podcast would say, the ability to work wherever so you can live every day like it's Saturday. That's like our whole mindset is to to put families together to make sure that people can work from home, do it efficiently, do it more productively, uh, be there at the the dinner table. My dad worked from home. I'm from D.C., so we do a lot of federal contracting. And my dad worked from home, and he never missed a dinner. And I always knew that I didn't want to go to the office from a young age. So that was always a focus of mine was to have a career that I could work for work wherever. I picked up development when I was in high school, well, younger than high school, internet. I grew up with the internet. So learning how to develop was kind of how it went. We both were federal employees at the office of generic drugs. You were in the legal department. Mm-hmm. She learned how to read a contract and uh, all the stuff that I don't know how to do. And now she's my boss. <laughs> and we uh, <laughs> we started a business together. You, you 2016, were 2016 when we started. Yeah, you were pregnant. I was. Yeah. Yeah. So super traditional. We were like, hey, we're kind of risk takers, which I feel like you kind of have to be if you want to homeschool and own your own business, and you have to be willing to take calculated risks. So yeah, yeah I was pregnant. He was in the hospital. Yeah, we just started our business. Yep. And yeah. so we just did it. And, Why not? Yep. Um. <laughs> yeah, I had had a foot and a half of my intestines removed. I was laying in a hospital bed. I was taking like 12 Percocet a day, painting the hallway oh of the gosh. house, like yeah, just a, a total lot. loose cannon. Yeah. She's pregnant. Yeah. We had just, I just quit my job. Quit his jobs. We didn't have health insurance. It was, it was, yeah. Looking back, it's, um, amazing. Stupid, that we made it but... Up, but it, <laughs> yeah. Startup stories are just amazing. I love because 
we all kind of start from this place of chaos and we're all just like whenever we all look back we're like i don't know how i did that right <laughs> why, why why we did it yeah <laughs> It was not the best of decisions. Looking back, I would never advise anybody to do that. I don't know. I think when you're in those tough situations where it's like things are uncomfortable, that's when you it's like, you know, make or break it. So you're either going to try really hard to do something for yourself or you can fall back into the comfort of working for the government, which is what we were doing. Yeah. So we were, you know, kind of we took the tough route, but we're happy Paid with off. the path that we're taking. Yeah. yeah. And ultimately it aligned with our core values. So it was like we knew what we didn't want. We knew that we didn't want to be at the government forever. You know, when we started working there, our family was like super supportive of it. My family, you know, my aunt worked for the government her whole life, retired, had the whole, all the benefits and everything, right? Retired early. And so when I started working for the government, it was like applauded. Like, it was like you made it, you know, like, oh, secure job. Your parents want security. Right. So working for Protect the government us, you know? secure. So, but we didn't want that. <laughs> so you um, wanted more. <laughs> and then yeah, through the building the business, that led us to well, we did work remote, you know, uh type of business, you know, type of implementations for systems and software. And that was kind of like seen as almost taboo prior to COVID. And then COVID hit, which led us to a whole nother next chapter, which is where the homeschooling comes in. Yeah. So we hadn't been homeschooling prior to COVID and then COVID hit, everything was just crazy and ridiculous. And I mean, us being people who like our own freedom and want, don't want to rely on someone else, we just saw that the school system was really failing the children. And so we pulled our son at the time, we only had one in school and we have four now. Yeah. Um, we just pulled him out and just started doing it ourselves. And third grade? we kind of started learning as we went. Yeah. So he was in third grade. Yeah. Yeah. And haven't looked back. <laughs> yeah. We saw like kind of same, it was like the same process of inefficiencies that led us to starting our own business. Like you identify something that's not working. You're like I know how to fix this. We tried to, we tried our best to fit into the government system. When we were there and build and just kept hitting roadblocks and red tape. And we we're like, you know, we know how to fix this. Let's create a business out of it. Yeah. And it's hard when someone's seen as like a subject matter expert, such as a teacher or yeah. someone in the federal government, but they're not able or willing to scale or adapt the changes. And so with COVID coming and the kids having to be online, the teachers were still trying to fit children like into this box in front of the computer. Yeah. And I mean, I don't see learning happening that way, no. like forcing learning down their throats in front of the screen. It just wasn't for us. No. And so it gave us the opportunity to just get out of Dodge. Yeah. We were like, we're done. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Which so that was the, that makes that a lot of sense of though. Yeah. Like that makes a lot of sense because you, so we got some friends that are teachers up here and they would have kids. And I know as a student, like, you I know who you were as a student. Yeah, I know exactly who I was. So I know that if it was like, hey, there's 20 kids that are supposed to show up for this Zoom call for this one hour course, I would be one of the kids that would not be on that computer. I'd be outside. Yeah. There was no way you were catching me during the day unless I was like forced. And my mom, she wouldn't force us. If you could go learn something outside, that was fine. But I wouldn't be there. So they had like four or five kids show up to these courses. Out of 30. And they're in grade eight. So like, there's some tangible things in the math side and the like in, in English and things that they're supposed to be learning the tangible side of it. They're just not getting that same education. So that's why it makes sense to me, like why you guys decided to go that route. Cause half of these kids just got mercy passed or whatever they want to call it. Yeah. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. shoved, through. shoved through. Yeah. Cause they didn't want to see you again in the eighth grade. <laughs> right. Well, you could yeah. argue that you learned more by being outside than you would in front of a Zoom anyways. Like you could say that, well, you know, we have four kids. I know y'all have kids, right? You have kids. I know that we've nope. had this conversation. Nope. You don't have kids? No. Oh, man. Well, then never mind. <laughs> yep. Podcast over. Where's the end button? How do I, <laughs> how do I jump off the, you know? So, yeah, well, we have, yeah, so we have kids, right? And so you spend so much of your time trying to get your kids off the computer and outside and then now you want them to go back inside to sit in front of a computer to, and that's like everything you're trying to get them off of. So yeah. go outside. You'll learn more outside. Haley, you have the, what, what is it that you say? The 
education is a an environment an atmosphere an but atmosphere yeah, right i mean but granted like for like eighth graders and once you're getting past that like grammar stage with math I mean, there true. are certain you know, different form- levels. yeah so but you don't need to spend eight hours in front of the computer as a child no, nobody needs to no, no one yeah it's not no Mm-mm. there's statistics that show that you don't even get eight hours of learning by going to the institutionalized schools right that you don't you don't when you're you might be in the building for eight hours, but you might be learning closer to like three, three hours, maybe four. And how much of that learning is actually hands on learning? Way less than that, where you're actually like yeah. getting that one to one that that attention, whereas homeschooling is it more difficult. Yeah. And and that's Haley, you can touch on this way more than I can. But w- when people are first starting out, they think they have to meet that eight hour model. Right. Well, it depends on what your background is, right? For us, we grew up in public school. And so when we first started homeschooling, I was under like the mindset that, okay, well, we're going to make our homeschool look like public school because that's what I was thinking that it needed to be. Um, But then just the more that we kind of went and through trial and error and meeting other homeschoolers and just throwing myself in that landscape, I really realized that it doesn't need to be that way. Right. And um, I really just wanted our children to grow to own their education to where, you know, they're building the skills that they need to do what they want to do um, and want to take ownership of their learning, which I feel like we're getting we're getting to that yeah. point. Our oldest, he's 12 and it's not so much of a battle with him. Like he he's matured so much. Oh, my gosh. I'm yeah. more of a facilitator now. I'm not teaching eighth grade math. Right. I'm just giving him the tools to where he goes and he does it. If he has questions, like we'll figure it out together. But that's another great thing is these homeschool kids are so great at figuring things out yeah. because, you know, they have to. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that brings up a question I have. So doing a bit of research on the difference, like for, especially for up here in Alberta and how things kind of work for homeschooling, they have this thing called unschooling, which is, yeah. it's not considered homeschooling, right? Like homeschooling is what you just said. It's kind of like replicating school in the home. Whereas like, unschooling is like child directed or child self-learning and they kind of come back to you after you've given them the the concept so i'd never even heard of that before like unschooling where they kind of it's self-directed at a certain age is that kind of something that you guys think most kids end up doing anyhow as they kind of get older i mean i think it may depend on just like what the setup is for each family i think unschooling is really cool and we don't really practice it throughout all of our education, but there are certain areas where I give the kids like a lot more freedom and what they're choosing to do. Like science is definitely one of them where I just encourage and just give books and give them tools. And I'm like, it's a lot of just go outside and like discover. Right. And then you've questions. Okay. You want to know, like, let's find out more about bees. And so now we're keeping bees and making honey. And so, yeah. um, Well, there's de-schooling and unschooling. Right. And they're different. But what talking about schooling. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to take that? Do you want to talk about what that is? I think that it's important for anybody who's interested in homeschooling, who's coming from a traditional education setting. So de-schooling is um, an opportunity to just kind of just stop school for a minute, like take a break, just release all of what your expectations are from your mind or like what you thought or think that school should look like, and then slowly start to bring things back onto your plate, right? So rather than just start off homeschooling, like, okay, this is what we're doing for reading, writing, math, science, history, like, you know, and then saying, whoa, that's too much. Like, I can't manage this. So instead of doing that, you just kind of stop everything. And then you just slowly pick up, you know, what works for you until you build out what your education is going to look like for your child. And that's where you can match unschooling and de-schooling together, where mm-hmm, you can yeah. start out by de-schooling. Just, that's kind of like the detox of it's, institutionalized right, education. Yeah. You're like getting out of it, right? Okay, whatever I thought education looked like, we're done with that. And we're going to build our own education, whether it's curriculum, whether it's location, whether it's atmosphere, co-ops, whatever. Yeah. You kind of just take a break understand what's important to you, almost set your core values as an education, you know, learning path. Yeah. And then you can start the process of, of unschooling, or you could do, you could do more traditional stuff. Like you could still do worksheets if you really want to. Some kids prefer that. We, one of our children, he just, he's that like type A mentality where he would like to just, yeah, not all the time sit, but he likes to sit down and like kind of show what he knows. Like, okay, I'm going to do a worksheet and I'm going to, this makes me feel accomplished. Like, you know, whereas does our other kids really aren't like that yeah 
<laughs> education and the way that your children learn, it'll all of your kids are going to be different, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, when you guys do have kids, what I always tell people is, mm-hmm. or if you have kids, okay, maybe sorry, not everybody has kids. To assume, <laughs> yeah. Know, um, the, uh, trying to adopt a workforce, Roy. You know, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what I always tell people is like, don't listen to anything that anyone ever tells you because every, every kid is different. In fact, you yeah. can't even lean on your own experience really other than changing diapers because everything you know about your first kid is going to be different than everything you know about your second kid. Like they're going to surprise you. So when you're going through the education process too, like the process of unschooling is great and it is absolutely just it's more so the understanding that everything can be a learning experience. Mm -hmm. But to say that we're going to teach everything outside in a non-traditional education environment might not work for one of your kids. And you might have to do worksheets or more traditional learning with them. But there are Mm -hmm. tons of resources out there, online resources, free resources. Haley, you're working on putting together stuff. with. So she has a site, homegrownwithhaley.com, where she has working on putting resources up there. We do podcasts. Like there's millions of ways that you can reach out and learn. Facebook groups, that was a big part of when you first start out. Mm-hmm. So it's like unschooling is like a type of education. Just like the traditional institutionalized learning is a type of education and you can mix and match as you go. Mm-hmm. I agree. The key to making a beautiful feature wall like this is sourcing the proper material that just happened to be delivered to the site by the installer who brought it from a shop in Okotoks where a crew was planing and milling material that's used for all kinds of things like barn doors, faux beams, and all sorts of custom furniture. Of course, it isn't that easy because before milling the lumber, the nails are removed from the boards, but not before hauling the boards from another yard which can kind of be fun to get to. The material is stacked and well organized because retrieving the material means going out and gathering each board, piece by piece. But the real secret is finding a barn that is no longer functioning for its intended use. The hundred year old boards from this barn will be on display in this new home for the next hundred years. We're Two Birds Furniture and this is what we do. We left off a boat talking about different catering it to each child yeah, and, and each learning where where to find resources we were talking about the different resources and Haley's got her website now where she's developing like some courses for different and so can you kind of just go into that a little bit Haley and just talk about like what you're developing that people can like reach out and resources for different because like homeschooling in my opinion it's not it's universal whether it doesn't matter really what country you're in or where you're at it's kind of a universal thing based on how you want to approach your education for your kids right yeah, I'd like to think so. Um, I mean, I only know really the laws in our state in America, in the U.S. Um, America. It's state by state. So you're allowed to homeschool in all states. Um, different states are going to have different requirements for homeschoolers. So I would suggest the first thing yeah. that someone wants to do is just to check on the laws of where they are. Right. right. So Canada might have its own requirements. Um, and then from there. I think connecting with a group in your area as a support system, whether it's through Facebook or just from researching online, finding out like if there's a co-op near you mm-hmm. so that you can, you really need a support system. I mean, even if it's just virtually, right? So as somebody who was just starting off in COVID, we were thrown into it. But as soon as I found other homeschooling parents who were veterans, it just, it gave me so much like relief. I didn't feel like as like blinded like I was yeah. you know it gave me a lot well, of it would be an overwhelming experience yes yeah it yeah. was overwhelming and it didn't yeah. need to be overwhelming right so you know finding people reaching out whether it's like online or you find something in person um that's great and then figuring out really what your child's learning style is right kind of understanding how your child learns and then understanding how you want to teach or how you best can teach. I think reading books, I always talk about this book that I really love. It's um, The Well-Trained Mind by Susan Wise. It's like a huge, almost like textbook, but she goes through just the different stages of education. She breaks it up into like the trivium, which is 
grammar stage, logic stage, and then rhetoric stage. And so from each of those stages, it's based on, you know, what you would think of as like elementary, middle school, and high school. Um, so she really just gives it all out there about like where a child is developmentally um, so that you can pair your curriculum to what the child needs at that point. Um, and that's a nice like to have that skeleton to build off of. Yeah. yeah. It, it's not necessarily like a, there's no like to like got, like blueprint as to say you have to do it this way and that's like both the hard part and like the good part about it right so it's like when you first start out it can be stressful because there is no this is how you homeschool like you, i mean there are like <laughs> curriculums that you can go out and buy i guess but you yeah, know there definitely are yeah and but people, that's not really that's what, what you, we did at first and yeah. it just didn't work for us but i mean i would suggest if someone is you know starting off starting with reading writing and math really and then building on from there because you can pull in you know other subjects or extracurricular you can things. teach from those core subjects yeah mm -hmm. and yeah like you, like you teach said history like history having... through reading yeah, having the resource like that book just for like a skeleton or like for bones yeah. and then based based on like your individual child's like learning yeah. style, then you can kind of build off there. But it's nice to have a starting point because I think a lot of people going into this would just have no idea where to start. Yeah. 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 Well, and I know for me, like I have, I, mom tells me stories all the time as a kid where they're like, when they're doing creative writing and like I'm grade two, so what am I, seven? And they're like, write on this family and there's just a picture and they want me to write this little workbook. And I'm like, I don't even know these people. How am I supposed <laughs> to write about them? So my like learning style is like, it's not practical. It's not logical. Yeah. Like, what am I making this up for? I don't like doing that. Yeah. So yeah. she had to completely revamp like the way we, we did things. And there was a did lot. Did she make up a story about the family? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I was, I'm not a, never was a workbook, but then you get kids like when you stick them in traditional school and I've got a cousin who's like very much like cannot take tests. Like, I don't know what, just can't. Like, I don't even know how he got through grade 12. I think they just mercy passed him all the way through and then threw him into the real world and say good luck. Good luck. Like he can't even, he, he's struggling taking his real estate course right now because he just can't take yeah. tests. So the traditional side of going into certain things, it doesn't make sense for a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of kids, right? Mm -hmm. and they try to trick you i don't know mean, like, right? institutionalized versus yeah you keep saying traditional but it's institutionalized well, i believe is what you mean right yeah it's, 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 <laughs> that's the term that we, that's the term that we use. use yeah institute well and it is like institutionalized right it's like to make you a, an employee and make you a worker right developed in mm -hmm. what 1930 that's that, that was the, the traditional idea behind it or the institutional idea was that you'd go in you'd get this education you come out you get your piece of paper then you get your next piece of paper and then you get a job and, and you're a perfect little worker right yeah we like to that think that not... the education was developed around like this this is the way that you do it right this is the traditional way but it's less than a hundred 100 years that we've been doing it that way you know and and less than 50 really that we've been doing it really that way i mean we have how many of our our parents just didn't go to college right that was like a totally normal thing to just not go to college in the mm -hmm. boomer generation so going to college is even more so like a gen x type of thing where it was like you have to do this right so this this idea that is traditional and i'm not trying to get on soapbox but the idea that it's a traditional way of learning is just misleading. You know, I mean, tradi traditionally, if you really want to talk about traditionally, we had small one room classrooms where you had more of this type of educational learning that is more like a homeschooling environment, more of like a co-op where you had like your community come together that were raising, they were learning and you were learning outside and you were going, you were learning on the farm and you were uh, learning the trades and you were an apprentice somewhere. That's really what homeschool is. So homeschooling is more traditional than the traditional uh, education is traditional. That's why we call it institutionalized mm -hmm. because you're led to believe that this is traditional. It's not traditional. This is made up recently and they just want you to do it so that they can run you through the system. You know, do it this way because we built banking around it. Do it this way because we built certifications around it. Do it this way because we built grants and programs and taxes around it. It's not actually traditional it's institutionalized which and i then. actually agree you just don't <laughs> like my terms okay you just didn't like my terminology but no and i 100 okay. sorry i 100 yeah. agree i 100 agree that that's and we're we're losing that now and that's why the, the, this is such an interesting episode that 
we're going through is we're losing that the skills, right? We can go on a computer and we can read and we can write and we can go and follow the institutions and exactly and get into the workforce. But I always ask the same question to everybody. I'm like, if we're losing, they're like, well, we're not really losing skills. I was like, well, go get me carrot seeds that aren't in a, in a package. Like go harvest them and tell me when you can get them. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen how tiny carrot seeds are and how much of a bugger they are when they go to seed to actually get them and dry them and actually be able to use them? Good luck. <laughs> like there's just like it's like you know that's my biggest thing it's like okay have fun like I've, I've tried it it's not an easy thing like it's a pain to, like and with the, these are little traditional skills like it's like you can't just go to the grocery store maybe one day you, to go get food like how how do you actually reproduce the crop that you just planted from a packet yeah yeah so yeah that, that's there are like, tons of skills we're losing as absolutely you know i know that y'all are in in Canada and so your your uh country might look a little different than ours but not really I think globally we are all losing these skills as we get older through technology as technology advances we lose certain skills that used to be common sense like research how to research something <laughs> kids don't know how to research anything you know our kids they don't necessarily know how to answer a telephone we had to teach you know it's not really like common knowledge anymore to say you know edward's residence dial a rotary phone exactly <laughs> which it seems it might seem silly but like technology is great and we're obviously not anti-technology we own a it firm <laughs> uh, so uh, we're not anti-tech by any means but as you don't want to lose the human exactly ness right you don't want to and it, what I makes think us human you guys right. are starting to teach that right like that's kind of the concept you guys have the tech side but you're started to teach the practical side at home. And that's, I think there's a big transition going on. Like I, I was reading some stats and this is U S stats, but in 99, there was 850,000 kids in the U S that are roughly like were, were scheduled to be homeschooled and they're up to 1.69 million in night. This was 2016 was where I was researching on. So it's gotta be higher than that now with COVID. Yeah. So yeah. It's a, it keeps growing because a lot of people are seeing like, well, we we're, we're in, in the group that we're in with Arate there, they talk about putting kids, instead of going to college at 18, why don't you just jump them and throw them in something like that? It's it's cheaper yeah. and they get firsthand experience right in before they even, if, if they want to go back to school, they sure can, right? Mm -hmm. After doing that, but it's the education system mm -hmm. for those. And like- Well, the real life experience. I took a year off from school because yeah. I was like, I have no idea why I want to go back to university or what's the point. And then I ended up going back and doing my four years. But for, for me, it didn't make a, it made a lot more sense to go and learn some stuff and go do some trades and that kind of stuff and learn some other skills than to go right into school and just, you know, spend 10 to $40,000, depending on what school I went to and have nothing in the first year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cliche nowadays, I think, to say, <clears throat> don't go to college. You have like the Gary V's of the world and all those that are saying like, don't go to college, don't go to college. And like, I kind of look at it in a different light. I do think college is important. I don't think it's mandatory, but I do think that it's important. But I also don't think you have to wait until you are 18, 19, 20 years old to enroll in college. There's a well, book- To further your education. To further your education. Okay. There, you can start furthering education at 12, 14 years old. You can graduate high school at 12 14 years old if you're homeschooled there's also like the you know you always hear people are book smart or common sense mm -hmm. smart right so co like college if you're a student enrolled living on campus like you know you're hopefully getting a little taste of like common sense and yeah. book smartedness um but like Roy's saying uh children who are homeschooled can advance pretty quickly through you know, 12th grade and then move into taking college courses uh, or college level courses. Right. Right. But we, not be a full-time student on campus. We get that question all the time. They're like, what grade is your kids in? You know? And we're like, well, what does that mean to you? Like, what are you asking us? What are you asking me how old he is? What do you like? Why are you asking me this? Because my son, what is he? Third grade? He said, well, I mean, he said in second grade. Right. But it's right. like he's third grade over here. He's fourth grade over here. He's doing Especially this at math, this age. Specifically for math. Yeah. They can move so fast. I've been so amazed at how quickly they're able to advance through math because, you know, they're mastering a skill and then we're just moving right along. Right. right? Whereas if they were in the classroom, 
they wouldn't be able to move forward as quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I think by the time he's in high school, we'll be, well, he'll be in college classes. You can graduate at 14. You can then dual enroll, go to college, get a, get a graduate, you know, undergrad at 18, get a master's at 22 if you wanted to go that route. And then all of your friends who went to institutionalized might just be getting out of undergrad, you know, assuming they made it out in four years and didn't, you know, take a victory lap like some of us did. So, you know, <laughs> that, that, that's like a totally normal thing, you know? And at that point, they probably actually, when they're dual enrolling, they probably have actually a better idea of who they are and what they want to do with their lives than somebody who went through undergrad. And now they're like, well, I don't even know what I want to do. I have this, you know, liberal, liberal arts degree, and I don't know how to use it or why I got it, you know, mm -hmm. whereas yeah, nope. somebody who might have graduated at 14, now they're doing internships at 15 instead of getting a job as like a lifeguard. Or maybe they started their own business. Or maybe they started their own business. Yeah. Which, you know, starting that earlier than later is nice. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a lot better. Is that when you have yeah. a pregnant wife and you <laughs> health insurance? Oh my gosh. Uh, the lessons the would, be, would be easier. We'll put it that way. The hard lessons would be easier because you have nothing like nothing to lose at that age, really. Yeah. You haven't like, yeah, you're not, there's, there's probably less pressure at 14 or 15 to start a business. than when you're 35 or 30 and you got mm -hmm. a wife and kids and you're like, uh Oh, we're about yeah. to be living in a van down by the river for a while. And we'll have to <laughs> <Yeah. wait ourselves."> <laughs> <laughs> you should take risks when you're younger, you know, you should take risks. You, know, you should really take rest of your whole life. But let's say that you did want to try homeschooling for those listening who are like, I want to homeschool or I'm interested in it. If you pull your kids out for one year and you go through it and you're like, eh, wasn't for us, you can put them back in. Like, it's not like, it, and guess what? When you, when they get back in, they're probably going to be further ahead than the rest of if the If you kids. did anything with them at all. Anything. <laughs> yeah. If you just like hung out with <laughs> at them. At least here in America. Right. The United States. It is crazy. <laughs> but so that this, is this the I, thing you guys are talking about when you got the one-on-one -on -one that used like what used to happen was the one-on-one -on -one and you'd have nine or 10 people in a schoolhouse and you got a lot more. Now there's so many kids in a class and there's yeah. so many different learning levels and levels mm -hmm. of households they've and come learning from. Styles. Well, and mm -hmm. just the different households they come from. So you're bringing 30 to 40 kids into a room from 40 different backgrounds that some have different levels of home education and some don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're, you get the kids that they call that they have ADHD, right? Mm. And it's like, well, that's probably not what they actually have. They're probably just bored out of their tree because at home they've already learned all this stuff and you're making them redo it. Yep. And it's, yeah. and when you're little or even me now, I'm like, I'm not relearning this. This is starting to irritate me right now. I'm getting bored. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I still do it. Like a, I just know how I am is like, I still have that like kid in me a little bit where I'm like, okay, I'm not relearning this with you right now. Like I I'll help you, but I'm, I'm not going to sit in a classroom and relearn something over and over again. I want to go outside and go do something, or I want to go be productive. That's all these, these guys are doing that are a little bit further ahead. They don't have, I, that's just my personal, I don't think they have this, all these diagnoses that, that come out. I'm pretty sure that they're just bored because they're, they're further ahead mm -hmm. and further advanced than the level they're stuck in. That could certainly be part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. there are lots of different things it could be, but you're exactly yeah. right. And now to combat that, you know, 30, 40 kid class sizes, what, what were our class sizes? I feel like 30 something. Yeah. Well, it was like upper twenties into thirties. Yeah. yeah. In elementary school. And then when you get into mm -hmm. high school, they get bigger. And then to combat that, they, they give you a teacher's aid. <laughs> right. And then, but the teacher's aid is just like a, it's like a, I, I feel badly for the teachers though. Cause you know, a lot we're of not people, put down teachers. Yeah, They do, no. they do important jobs, you know? Yes, of course. And they get into it cause they want to be educators. And then, you know, at least here in the States, they have to they meet all these requirements based upon testing. And so these poor teachers are just like teaching to a test and they're not able to really teach the students, you know, and, you know, a lot of teachers who are kind of, they're leaving the workforce um, and they're either starting private tutoring. Um, a lot of teachers who are parents that we know, they've just started homeschooling. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Most of the, really, they're, they're set with a specific curriculum that they have to meet in a certain timeline, right? No matter yeah. whether yeah. if the children are following or not, just like that's right. the yeah. timeline that they've been given and, and funding, and funding, funding comes yeah. from test scores, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. So yeah. In America, it was George Bush. He passed the no child left behind. At least that's what it's referred to as. And while it had really good intentions to make sure that we were elevating everybody, it backfired because now you're no longer teaching to the top of the class to make sure everyone's progressing and, hey, you bottom better keep up. You're now teaching to the bottom of the class and you're slowing down your top learners. So now these people who, you know, the the, the top, I don't know, 10, 15 percent of the class that could be progressing and could, could be getting to a point where they are moving into the AP and the whatever, what, BA or whatever the other one is, yeah. whatever they're called. AP is advanced placement. And so like that, they could be moving up, but now you're holding them back and now they're having to do the same five worksheets over and over again, or, Hey, play at your desk quietly until the, and so when you change your focus, you're slowing the whole, whole class down. So instead of your, you know, instead of you being as strong as your strongest portion of the class and everybody else rising, you're now like, you're only as good as your weakest link now. And so everybody is being taught down. That's what it was a very, it was championed when it came out no no child left behind i was in high school when that came out and i remember it being like this big deal well it's not in place anymore so obama he left he, he got that out yes so that's, but we still um, have some of the remnants of well it. no it's the every student succeeds act now oh, so God. unfortunately okay. in, <laughs> it got even so, worse right and so something you know they'll push a law through for monetary slash power reasons. Yeah. And then people end up not being happy with it. So then they'll rename it something else and push it on through right. again. Now it's our policy. So, yeah. So it's unfortunate that children have to be the, you know. What did Obama call it? it? Every child succeeds. What's the difference between every, every, every student succeeds? Every at? child succeeds I, I and no child left I behind. That's just like they want to change a couple words around. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's all funding. It is. <laughs> yeah. It is. But that is the opposite. Like, it's funny because like you look at the 90s or even like going to school. Yeah, going to school in the 90s. You remember watching guys like Michael Jordan or Wayne Gretzky. Those guys brought their team with them. Like yeah. if you watch hockey, Gretzky had a guy named Dave Semenko who was talented, but not that talented. He was there to beat guys up who beat up Gretzky. Like he brought Semenko his protector. Up. Bob Probert, mm -hmm. same thing. He played with Stevie Y. He was there to protect him, but he also scored a lot of goals playing on that line. It brought him up from a level that he wasn't supposed to be on the line. Same as like you watch like what Jordan did with, with his team. He brought guys up, whether they liked it or not. We don't do that anymore in society either. It's like we're all trying to find this level playing ground. and Where it's, it's okay for everyone. It's, yeah. it's not reality. Mm -hmm. Like this is why we want to push people a little bit. Like let's start pushing ourselves a little bit harder and like letting the kids push themselves. Cause they want to, a lot of them do. Yeah. Cause I yeah. actually had my nephew come up to me and he, he, the reason that this is kind of hitting home a little bit is he's like, is he 10 now? He's 10. And he's like, can you, can you teach me how to build stuff? He's like, I'm kind of tired. Like, I feel like I'm kind of useless. And I was like, Aww. you're 10. That's yeah. way too young to start feeling oh. like that. I'm like, so let's get you in here and let's start like, whether you learn how to run the CNC and the computer, cause you're interested in that or whatever, you can still build stuff with the technology that people are going to buy from you or that they need that skill in their shop. So he's only 10. So these kids, they actually want to learn like and progress. They don't want to kind of stay. Well, with... they want to try a lot of different things at a young age. Yeah. yeah. Not Maybe like you like guys it. had mentioned earlier, not wait until they're like 17, 18 before they try a bunch of stuff, be able to try stuff like in those earlier years. And the mm -hmm. one thing I like about homeschooling, like, when the kids like in the UK for me, it's awesome. That's one of the, my like examples is Robin's cousins are all um, like red seal carpenters at 22, 23 years old. They started at 16, mm -hmm. right? We don't even have that anymore. They kind of got rid of those classes. Like you could go into shop, you could go into metallurgy, you could go into these classes at 16. They don't have it anymore up here that you can do these as it's, it's a little bit harder to get to. They kind of got rid of the, the, the school in town here even. Um, mm -hmm. So you can't even like at 20 years old, have no debt, have a, have a ticket and be making enter money and enter the workforce. You don't have that opportunity. Now you have to wait till you're 18. And now you're like, so th there's, there's an opportunity like you're saying, and for these guys to, and these kids to try different things at home and kind of be like self-led a little bit and try things that to see if they like it mm -hmm. and be able to advance further at a younger age. Yeah. Yeah. 
sure. And I don't know yeah. if you guys are seeing the same thing with like for, for, for what you guys are doing, like seeing the same thing for, cause that's a big thing for us is the trades. We're going to lose a lot of the kids with skills and the trades coming up. There's just, there's not enough people building and producing for what we need for volume for what the demand is. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a major problem in here in the States too. Finding HVAC technicians, truckers, trucking, you know, I mean, I'm by no means an expert in the trucking <laughs> industry. I do. We do have a client who owns a, it's true, yeah. a company who's in the trucking industry and talking with him. It's a major concern where they're trying to lower the the age. I think to be a truck driver, you have to be 21. And so they're trying to rate uh, to lower it to 18 to attract more people because by 21, you hope, you know, you either just got out of college. And if you just got out of college, you probably didn't go to college to become a trucker. And so the, you, the, the persona that you're trying to attract is somebody who's out of high school who wants to get into a trade. And so by having it at 21, you're kind of losing that. People are choosing other trades or they're going to do other things. So trucking is an industry that, that is really hurting right now. Mm -hmm. HVAC, your parents own an HVAC company. and Yep, hiring is really hard for them really right hard. now because um, people either don't want to work or they are you know, led into the college track, right? And not really even told that trades are an option. When we were in school, it trades, it wasn't, it was kind of something you do if you can't make good grades. That's like how yeah, it was for like us. Negative, it was uh, like taught yeah. that, well, if you did well in school, you're going to go to college. It right. wasn't like, well, hey, look at all the other things that you could do and you could have a specialized skill and actually be able to like maintain your home right. <laughs> and like yeah, yeah you know so i'm pretty what a concept that in your, in <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. yeah how many times have you heard like the example where it's like oh you better do well in school or you're gonna end up being a trash man it's well, like, like a plumber or a plumber a plumber's it's actually like, a great what's job wrong with that? i mean i wouldn't want to do it but uh, like, no, it's, it's not a, mine it's a great job it you know and they make a good living and they get good benefits and there's nothing wrong with it you know we need people we need trash men and okay hey what about starting your own trash business and now you're you own your own business of yeah. something that is the necessity that powers the infrastructure of the mm -hmm. of the city so it's just, we have this negative like perspective of the trades. And it's like, mm -hmm. everybody wants, everybody wants their kid to be a lawyer. Everybody wants their kid to be a doctor. And, you know, oh, well, you, but now we have this thing where it's like, everybody needs to learn to code. And it's like, yeah, we? that's cool. <laughs> but like, shouldn't no, they we make friends with Roy and we hire <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. The trades are super important. I didn't learn how to use like a drill until I was in my 20s. You know, like my younger brother doesn't know how to hang, like mount a TV. He had to call me over there. He's like, he was, he's two years younger than me. Okay. This was like, well, like seven, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. So we were in our late 20s. He's like, hey, Roy, can you come over and mount my TV? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, and I didn't even know that you had to find like a stud to do it. You know, I'm like dry, drilling into the drywall. You know what I mean? <laughs> So it's like those type of like life skills. Common sense. Type yeah, things. they're like common sense. But like right. I focused on coding and developing and my brother focused on sports and it both right. got us very far and what it is that we wanted to do. But we missed that like well-roundedness. Yeah. And with all that said, I mean, when you are homeschooling, you're learning right alongside your children, right? So yeah. our oldest son, he's really into wanting to hunt. And so Roy never grew up hunting. I didn't. Yeah. But it's one of those things where you find the resources, whether it be through other people, you know, who are experienced with hunting or YouTube, like you guys learned how to skin a squirrel, like oh on YouTube. Gosh, yeah. And like, so it's, it's really fun, you know, being able to learn alongside. Talk about being thrown kids. into it when your son. So we got him an air rifle pellet gun for what was it? Birthday, yeah. Christmas or something yeah. like that. Cause that's all he wanted. All he wanted to do was hunt. And so we're like, cool, man, like squirrels. go squirrel hunting. And we live on five acres. And uh, not like you guys up there who own basically <laughs> half of Canada. <laughs> we, uh, we're out on five acres and he's walking around the property and he's like, dad, I really want to go squirrel hunting. I'm like, yeah, sure, man. Have at it. Like, he's not going to hit anything. Like, no way. Right. <laughs> like 20 minutes later, he comes back holding a squirrel. <laughs> I'm like, what do we do? She's like, what am I supposed to like? We got to skin it now. Like, and so like, it's me and him and we're in the garage with a knife pulling up YouTube, how to skin to a squirrel. Oh my gosh. And I was terrified. Like I've you never skinned it. An I did it. Yeah. Yep. 
Talk about being thrown into it. That's I'm a difficult it. one to learn on. <laughs> like the surface uh, it was area. something. <laughs> yeah, it's a little surface area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was yeah. something. Um, oh, better to learn on a squirrel than a deer, I'll tell you that. But <laughs> it was uh, it was something. And then, you know, and then we cooked it mm-hmm. and we made a squirrel pot pie out of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he was super proud. And thinking of unschooling, he got really into wanting to learn how to tan the hide. And so that's something that we kind of went down that path of like learning about like tannin yeah. and like how to tan hide so that it's preserved. Um, and yeah, so that was a cool. So it's been an adventure hole. for yeah. sure with hunting. Yeah. I did not grow up hunting. I went turkey hunting for the first time like a month ago and uh, I didn't shoot anything. So my <laughs> son automatic. So I've never shot an animal. I've never killed anything. My son has like five five squirrels and a deer <laughs> under his belt and he's 12 and i'm in my <laughs> mid 30s and i have never killed anything but it's and not he, a competition it's not but not to you tell him that you know <laughs> <laughs> hey uh, anything yeah. you can do to beat dad you're good yeah i know, he's, I know. he made fun of me i came he home did. he's like where's your turkey i didn't get one what you <laughs> mean? He's, i'm like the worst hunter you know? <laughs> oh gosh that's so funny that's a big confidence boost for him though for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. And you play into your kids' levels of confidence. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. one of our kids is is just naturally gifted athlete. athlete. They're mm-hmm. all athletic, but one of them is just like, I'm, I love sports. And he's into it, right? He's into it. Yes. And cool, you know? And, but, and our oldest, like he's athletic, but he was never like the kid who just wanted to go to baseball practice, you know? And so like, for me that was really hard mm-hmm. i grew up playing sports and so i'm like no you have to do it and you're gonna love it right. but he loves to hunt right. like he loves to be outdoors he loves knives and all this stuff that i know nothing about <laughs> and so yeah i learn as i go you know <laughs> what i think that's probably one of the greatest things though is that when your kids start to like bring things to you to teach you like even with like our niece and nephew and stuff they bring stuff to you and they want to show you what they're working on and then they want you involved in it and they want you to learn and I might not have a clue what I'm doing on some of it either. But you'll figure it out together. But we'll, right. we'll yeah. sit down and we'll figure it out. And I think that's that's where that well-rounded education comes in that we're all looking for. And a lot of these kids are starting to look for. They want to be more well-rounded. They want to know how things work and why things work. And I think it's super important that we present that to as the next generation and as an option for people, right? Because like you said, it's not like you can't go back to, to school and like go right. that route. But- you probably won't if want to. Wanna, yeah. If you want to take your passion and that's what hunting's your passion. Well, you're going to get into a lot of education just from that, because there's yeah. a deep, dark hole in foraging in butchering and getting the right cuts and animal husbandry and how to even like use the whole animal correctly. Like you can go, there's so many different parts that provide different value and you know, how to set up a camp and how to live off the land and what, you know, <laughs> there's there's a so much to it that a lot of people just are used to i call it glamping they just grab a camper yeah. and let's rock and roll and i'm, I'm like yeah. fill up the fridge yeah. let's roll <laughs> <laughs> it's not my style i'm not like that's not what i want to yeah. do but like even they can get into like fly fishing and all sorts yeah. of stuff so there's a lot of avenues so what i want to kind of get a kind of a course curriculum through from you guys for our listeners too just because that's kind of the idea is so each age group you guys kind of set different I know you, you, you guys ha- kind of have up to 12. So like up to 12 and 12 is when they can start. Actually, that's when you start developing what you kind of want to do. And you start testing out different things. You try new sports, you try this. So what kind of, where do you kind of put them? Cause a lot of people are going to be like, well, I don't even know where to start. Like without that hands-on curriculum, right? Like here's your grade one paperwork, get them to finish it and submit it. And the way you go. So how do you kind of break that down? Just so for people listening can kind of maybe start with depending what age group their kids at. So for an older child, yeah. So for an oh, just to go over all of them, you yeah go she, over yeah. all of them. Yeah, you've got it. You, I mean, they're the way that Haley. What was the I, What was the question? Curriculum. How do you understand? How How do you find the right curriculum? Okay, so what each child would need. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, depending on where you're starting at your child's age, and and there's stage two. You know, some children need their maybe they're coming out of a institutionalized setting and they're behind or they're ahead um you'll want to um 
it's starting with foundation like reading, right? You need to have a, a yeah. solid reader. So if you're starting with a younger child, the first thing you really want to do is make sure that they're a solid reader because it's true. It sounds silly, but like reading like allows you to do anything, you know? And so that's our focus right now for our youngest. Like we're not really, you know, hammering in history or science. I think those are things that are picked up along the way, just being a part of a family. Um, but and you right, can read history, right? You could be like, all right, we're going to learn to read and we're going to read a history book. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to so read a reading, science book and reading classics. You know, I mean, I yeah. think that that's important. You know, some of these books are just so silly and watered down. Like you're not really getting much from them, but if you can you know, teach a child from classic literature, they're picking up, you know, grammar, grammar yeah. just by looking at those words. And, um, and so once you have a solid reader, I mean, then you're able to start to put things in front of them. Yeah. Really, it's in the simple terms, right? That's when you can start just feeding them more. Um, and that's what that's what we've done, right? Yeah. So setting that foundation in the grammar stage. And then once they move out of that grammar stage where they have a solid foundation of reading and then they have a solid foundation in like order of operations with math, right? So like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, then you can start, you know, giving them the next step, which is like the logic stage yeah. and the formula, the more ab abstract math concepts. And you can find curriculum when we use a specific curriculum for math, because mm -hmm. I mean, that's important to yeah. us. I'm not a math, like I'm not a math whiz, right? So I like to have that crutch yeah. that we follow along with the math curriculum and it just builds off of itself. But that's an important point before, because I know that you got more to say on this, but if you don't know how to do something, because that's a question you get all the time. Yeah. How do you teach your kids math? How do you right. teach your kids calculus? Do you know calculus? Right. You know, so like, how would you respond to that? Well, we outsource, yeah. right? So the same thing in a business. Yeah. Hey, hey guys, um, if you don't make, uh, you guys do uh, restorations, right? Like if you don't build doors, how do you build a door? Like you either, find somebody who does. Either figure you know? it out if you want to figure it out or outsource, which right. is what we've done. And I've been more comfortable with that. So our son, he's a math tutor and he actually does his math class through an online university. So he's just, he's good there. Like, and that's something that you can do to get it off of your plate. Um, but yeah, starting with like the reading, writing and math, and then pulling in, you know, what's interesting. So we follow a history timeline we just do history of the world and we go through each year, we do history of the world. And then we spend a little bit more time in different centuries and different years. So, um, you know, we started this year in ancient Egypt and now we're up to like American revolution and we spent, you know, some more time in like the middle ages this year. Um, and you know, from that you, yeah you know, you learn about, you can learn about science and some of the different, um, you know, theories that were developed in the middle ages. It's really cool, you know, but I mean, just have fun. Finding good to books. Take things too seriously. I think the grammar to logic. I think people get stressed because yeah. they're like, and I know I do, because I'm like, this is my child's education. Right. And I have to remind myself, like Nobody when I'm in it. Nobody cares about your kid's education right. more than you do. Yes. So send them off to an institutionalized school. Yes. They're not going to care as much about your kid's education as you care about your own education. Right. So you're always going to, you're always going to have that added stress on your Yeah. Life. I have to take a step back from myself and just say like, you know, they're all right. You know, at the end of the day, if you know, we don't get through everything that I had on our plate. It's okay. <laughs> our son, our oldest son, they were like, he needs to be on this. He needs to be in this special program. He needs to be in this, right? Like trying to say that he, because he didn't have that traditional in the box institutionalized type of learning. Right. And then we took him out and then he tested what? Like 12th grade science. Yes. It's so like, so the kid is smart. He just didn't fit into your box, right. you know, like the kid could be taking senior level courses as a sixth grader. Mm -hmm. It's just you were trying to give him worksheets on, you know, things that he either already knew. What, what was it? His kindergarten teacher said he would do really well in Adderall. He was. They yeah. Said. And but what did they say? Oh. They did say that. Yeah. Which, hey, don't do that, teachers. That's yeah. you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. But there was a oh, he was front loaded. Yeah. They said that he learned too much in preschool and that's why he, he was bored. But it's like, what? What do you mean he's front loaded? What does that even mean? How can you learn too much from a from a grade prior to and then move into that course and be penalized for it? You know? Yeah. But going back and trying to like put it in simple terms, um, just giving your kids a solid foundation in that early grammar stage and then 
being that facilitator who is giving them the tools that they need to, you know, increase from there. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to ask you a lot of questions, right? Throughout the process so that you, you being able to facilitate slash delegate and outsource yeah, is is a huge benefit for them, right? Because then they're getting that one-on-one. It's like this specifically needs to go to this person for, you know, this kid, whatever, whatever, whatever number it is on the list. (laughs) Like, right. You're like, okay, I need to send, I need to get a tutor for this. Or I, Hey, I actually understand, you know, basic biology. I can probably walk you through the dominant genes and the recessive gene topic, you know, whatever Mm -hmm. it might be, you can walk somebody through that. Or like I said, delegate. And that's the nice thing is because it's one-on-one. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, Hey, I got 30 and the child is leading it. Yeah. And they're yeah. leading it with the questions nine times out of right. 10. Are they leading it with the questions that they ask you? Oh yeah. They ask so many questions. All, okay. <laughs> All the questions. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Constant question, right. but you don't, you know, and you don't have to have the answer for all of them. Right. It, the answer can be, well, let's figure it out, you know, yeah. and let's learn right next to them. There are, there are like curriculums you can purchase. Like, uh, what do we do first? A Becca. Like a, a whole like in the box uh, curriculum. Like yeah, that. there's yeah. out of the box curriculums. There's a um, Matthew C is a math one that we really mm-hmm. like that yeah. we use. Um, our son does Liberty University, so Liberty Liberty University is a Virginia is a Virginia based uh, Christian university like college, and they offer classes to homeschool kids. Yeah, and our that's does he do math mm-hmm. through that? Yeah, yeah, he does math through Liberty University. So there are like. There's no shortage of resources. And we use a co-op as well that helps with some of the projects and public speaking. And mm-hmm. to your point earlier, where you were saying about the growth here in America in terms of homeschooling, where were, where were we at? Like 75 families of the co-op before COVID. Mm-hmm. And, and now it grew to 300. At, and from oh my word. 2019 to 2021, it grew from 75 to 300 families. Yeah. So that shows you how much homeschooling is growing. Yeah. And yeah. lean on your other homeschooling families, or if you don't have one like in your neighborhood or whatever, get on, you know, a social media platform, Facebook or mm-hmm. Instagram mm-hmm. or, you know, connect with Haley, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. find your resources. Absolutely. Haley, what was your website again for resources? Homegrownwithhaley.com and it's H-A-L-I-E. Yep. Yeah. Homegrownwithhaley.com. Yeah. I got two questions before we wrap up for you guys, because this is a couple's episode. How do you guys divide the kids up? Who does the schooling? Or, or Roy, you just uh, just abandon Haley. How's that work? <laughs> How do you think? Like who who has been way more uh, knowledgeable about this subject throughout this? Uh, throughout I don't this think podcast? that's a question Roy has to answer. But yeah. you, know, you know, like there's going to be certain things you you both have different skills, right? Yeah. That you bring yeah. to the table. Yeah. So when you guys are delegating, like who who kind of and how do you like? Did you take all four kids at once, or do you guys kind of break that up a little bit? Like, just how does that kind of work from from a couple side? Yeah. Well, so we run our business out of our house. And so during the day, Roy is very focused on the business side of things. And that's great. I'm happy with that. I would rather not be over in the business world during the day. Um, And so I have all the kids and, um, you know, depending on who I'm with at that time, the kids are mostly either outside or with me. Uh, And then if for mainly tech questions, that's what Roy will come in. Um, our oldest, he wanted to learn how to do video editing and yeah. Photoshop. And so, you know, we'll be the one to sit down with that. Um, or if there's like certain math things that I just would rather not get yeah. into um, after dinner, dad will sit yeah. down with one of them. I have an engineering brain, I guess. So I'm very like, when it comes to like math, like I get, I get math, you know? So like, I help with the math a little bit, you know, and I help here and there and I'll read to them. We'll do Bible together. Um, although we need to do be- better at that. Um, we always, <laughs> we always need to do better at something. Right. So, uh, but we'll read together Bible time. Like I'll read stories at night. So like it, it but it is by no means like a 50, 50, like Haley does. Yeah. But that's yeah. just because that's how our family is set yeah. up. Like Roy needs to be in the business 100% during the day. And so I am fine with taking on all of it. Yeah. If we had to split it a different way, I'm sure where I would be able to take on mm-hmm. something if I, you know. Well, I've taught I've taught our oldest how to do what I do. Yeah. Started that process, got him an email address with our business right. and got him uh, added to some of the resources that we're training, you know, my, our new employees on. And because mm-hmm. he showed interest in that, he wanted to build a video game. So I'm like, hey, come on over here, man. I'll yeah. teach you how to do this. Yep. Nice. That's incredible. 
I think that that's awesome though. That you guys actually like everybody does it. Right. So that's I always like people to hear that, how you kind of divide that, that up because you're outnumbered. Let's be like, if we're doing <laughs> yeah. math, you guys are outnumbered. Like seriously. Playing zone defense. <laughs> yeah. Right. Pretty yeah. much. So just yeah. that division a lot, cause a lot of people are going to get overwhelmed. Like if you got, you're trying to teach four different grades yeah. and four mm-hmm. different kids, that's a, that's a lot of like delegation and things you need to problem solve and figure out. Right. So a lot of people are probably curious just as much as I am, mm-hmm. how that goes about. So it's good to like, you can kind of just pass things on or delegate. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we're going to end the episode. Like we always do for the couples episode. Robin hasn't asked this question in a bit. It's her favorite oh, question. Oh gosh. So I forgot about this question. There you go. Um, so if you guys could go back and give your younger selves, any type of advice, what would that be? You go first. About anything. I- I would just say like, stay the course. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> stay the course. Yeah. There are so many people who are like, that try to get you to go one way or another. Or like to give up. Yeah. And things get hard. For good reasons, most times. Right. They don't they protect care. you. Yeah. But I think, you know, if you are working towards a goal, yeah, it's going to be hard to get there. Like you're going to have to put in the work. And just to yeah. stay the course and trust the process. I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change anything. Maybe to start sooner. Yeah. You know? But like, I don't <laughs> even know how we would be able to start sooner. We, we yeah. Because we had, I mean, we fought, like there was nothing you could do. It was sink or swim. Like maybe if we had yeah. started sooner and you hadn't been pregnant and I hadn't been in a hospital bed, then we would not have cared as much to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, ah, yeah. well, oh, we tried that. It didn't work, you know, but it was yeah. like zero option mentality. Like we have to make this work or, you know, we got we got three mouths to feed and a mortgage to pay. Right. So yeah, I wouldn't change a thing. Stay the course. You know, I'd say follow your heart, but your heart's a liar. We would have started homeschooling sooner. Yeah. So I would just say, you know, pray. We definitely would have started homeschooling sooner. Yeah. Yeah. So that is definitely one thing that I probably would have told myself because the reason why we didn't homeschool sooner is because of me. Right. Before, even before COVID, like it was something that we were trying to figure out with our oldest. And I was like, nah. Yeah. So homeschool kids are weird. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How would they make friends? How would they socialize? How would yeah. they live? What are we going to teach them? And then like COVID happened and I'm like, nah, let's do it. Like I was wrong. Yeah. Like, so we definitely would have started that process earlier. She wanted to. And I, and I was the, the, the reluctant one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. I think that was great. Yeah. Thank you so much guys for joining us today. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate Thanks you guys coming you. on. All the insight. Again, you guys can find Haley at where again? I want to get one more time. Homegrownwithhaley.com. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, th- thanks for coming on. And uh, as always, you guys can find us at businesslifeahusbandwife.ca. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Thanks for listening, everybody. As always, like, share, and subscribe to help us grow the show.